This is Passion with Dr. Lori Batito on Montreal's News Talk Leader, CJAD 800. Dating Dilemmas tonight. Uh, Frank Kermit is my guest. He is uh, uh, the new newest relationship columnist for the West End Times. Uh, you can also find him at uh, uh, Frank Kermit. I mean, uh, Frank, Frank Talks. Talk, talk, talk. Am I tired tonight? You I think, think I'm just a little bit? FrankTalks.com. Well, it's either that or you're completely mesmerized by my yes. positive Yes, that too. Before. Yes, you're not shy, are you? I used to be. Did you? Were you? I used to be. There was only one place I was not shy. On stage. Really? Put me on stage. I wasn't shy. Like as a speaker when you would speak to groups? Uh, yeah, in front of mm -hmm. class, uh, on this auditorium stage, uh, even if I wasn't the greatest singer. It was the one place I felt safe because I was in a position where I could see anybody who would be coming after me. Interesting. You know, put me in a small group, intimate group with my friends around. You know, one of them would pickpocket me. But put me up on a stage. I had everybody's attention. It was the one place that I felt powerful and completely safe. Is that what led you into theater and, and doing all of Because you did Absolutely. a degree in, in, in theater. and. Well, I did a degree in uh, communications. I did a minor in theater, but I also did a lot of drama therapy drama while therapy, right. I was in the theater. Right, right, right. And, um, I like, guess that would help for shy people, the drama therapy. It can. Uh, you know, there's Toastmasters where they learn how to give speeches, mm -hmm. uh, public speaking classes. You know, mind you, most shy people would just stay away from those workshops and classes because it's so difficult. Right. Um, if you're going to sign up for one of those, don't just sign up saying, yeah, well, I'm a shy person. I want to get over this. Look for a teacher who specializes in dealing with shy people so that they know to take baby steps and try to find a way to make mm. you feel safe. I remember in university, I have a, I had a friend who was pretty shy, and we took a class together in the social work department. And in social work, you have to do a lot of group stuff, and you have to get up in front of the class a lot, and you have to present a lot, and, you, and she quit the program. She just quit. Mm -hmm. I can't do this. This is your, up your speed. This is not my speed, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and it, 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 was, it was from that shyness. It didn't stop her from doing other things, but that was something that she didn't uh, want to do. So what happens to, do a lot of um, shy people uh, feel, have a lot of self-loathing? They can, and it's not because uh, just the fact that they're shy, but being shy stops them from being able to connect with people. Sometimes the shyness will manifest in what would be interpreted as bizarre behaviors. So let's say you're talking to someone and that person is shy and they don't really talk back or they're kind of looking away. They don't mean to be rude, but right. that's how they're coming across. And because they come across as rude or cold or distant or uninterested, people turn around and say, wow, I feel insulted. I tried to talk to you. You, you, you put up this wall. What have I done to you? Right. And so because they're on the receiving end of all of this negativity that they themselves have caused unintentionally right. with this behavior, there's a lot of self-loathing that comes in. So they start to alienate themselves even more. And they hate their shyness. Like I, I've very rarely met a shy person who, who liked their shyness. No. And, uh, they saw it as a debilitating. In many ways, it can be quite debilitating. Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, to use a very uh, politically incorrect term, it's a handicap. Mm -hmm. it, it makes things so much more difficult. Shyness can be endearing in the sense that if somebody is normally very outgoing and they're shy in just a couple of areas of their life, mm -hmm. that's a little in endearing because what you're doing is taking a very strong person and showing a little vulnerability. Right. However, when it's the opposite where you're shy in the majority of areas of your life and you're only outgoing in one or two, this makes it very difficult to connect with other human beings. And it can be paralyzing. Like, totally I, I know paralyzing. a lot of people who are paralyzed in, the, in the, the field of dating and who are, you know, uh, older and have never dated because of their shyness. They always say it's the shyness that gets in the way. Well, just like anxiety will cause physical symptoms, Shyness is the same thing. Right. You're really, really shy. Your muscles will clench up. You might start sweating per, uh, profusely. It's, it's, it's a very uncomfortable position to be in. Anytime you're in a situation where you really don't know what's going to happen, right. and that's life, Right. A, th that feeling of being uncomfortable is just the barrier. So what, what can a, uh, what's the best way for a shy person to, 
come out of their shell? Like, what are some of the things they can practice? Well, we've already talked about storytelling. We, so we can talk about learning to calibrate. What does that mean? Well, that means figure out, um, put people into categories and learn what behaviors are best suited for those categories. The examples I like to give are, when you go to a funeral, you're going to exhibit certain behaviors that you wouldn't exhibit at a wedding. Right. When you're going to a wedding, you're going to exhibit certain behaviors you wouldn't do at work with your right. boss. And that sort of thing. So you just want to start figuring out what behaviors are appropriate to what settings. Learning that is going to help with shyness. Some of the other things that I would recommend people do. First of all, practice smiling. Mm -hmm. Shy people don't realize this, but they rarely smile. Well, they are looking down often at their when they're walking. They're looking at their feet. They're not exactly. looking straight ahead and... Who are they going to smile to? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you have to practice smiling just to let the people around you know that you're not scowling at them. Because most people aren't going to think, oh, this person is just shy. Right. Most people are going to assume this person doesn't like me. Or they're mean or they're snobby or they're cold or they're something else. You mm -hmm. don't often get the shy label. You get all the other stuff. that comes. Exactly. Right. Now, we should also talk about eye contact. Mm -hmm. Now, for a shy person, what I normally recommend, when you look at somebody... You don't look them directly in the eye because that might be too intimidating for the shy person. So look at the person right in the smack in the middle of the forehead. So right now, Dr. Laurie, I'm looking at you and I'm looking straight into your eye. You Can you tell that I'm looking in your eye? Uh, I feel like you're looking at me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to look at the center of your forehead. Do you, does it still feel like I'm looking you in the eye? Yeah. It does, your eyes haven't moved. Exactly. But okay. the, my focus right now is so on your forehead, but it still looks like I'm looking you in the eye. Okay. That makes it safe for me as a shy person to make eye contact with oh, you. Good trick. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it works. Mm -hmm. So if I start getting nervous, I don't look you in the eye. I look you in the forehead and all of a sudden I can be Kermit. Okay. <laughs> you be Kermit. Okay. I like <laughs> what you else? You be, you be Lori. Okay. Uh, focus on your body posture. Mm-hmm. Because, again, a shy person gets so inside their own head, they don't realize how they're coming across. So part of it is to bring them into a moment of awareness. I am aware of my body posture. Oh, wait a minute. I'm slouching. I'm going to sit up more. Oh, wait a minute. I'm, I'm curled up and, and scowling. No, I'm going to turn and face the people that I want to talk to. I'm going to make it a point to look at the person's forehead and fake that I'm looking into their eyes to get me through this moment. I'm going to smile so that the person says, oh, someone's looking at me, and they've got a little smile. It means that they like what they see. They kind of mm -hmm. like me. Maybe they want to have a conversation. Right. And that's maybe the trickiest part is how do we start that conversation when you're shy? It's the, so you see somebody that might interest you. You think, oh, I'd like to talk to this person. What do I say? How do I do it? That, because, and I've heard this from some guys that say, I, I'm afraid of coming off creepy. Well, if you've been shy most of your life, you probably have come across creepy. <laughs> you've probably been called oh, creepy. And it's, it's a hard thing. That's why sometimes you need a coach with you who's going to say, okay, you're going to go there, and then they're going to watch your behaviors and your body posture. And then comment and say, okay, this is why she was freaking out when you were approaching her. Okay. One of the best ways that you're approaching someone is just to go up and you can either pay them a compliment and in certain circles that's considered very unseductive because you're going up and telling somebody that you, you know, oh, I happen to like that about you. Well, I think that it's a nice place to start if you're a shy person because shy people generally want to be good people. They want to be nice. They don't want to They are hurt. nice. Usually it's those nice guys or the, ni the exactly. very nice people. Mm -hmm. So let's take that. Let's work with that. Let's work within that scope. They want to be good people who don't hurt anyone. So go up and pay somebody a compliment. Here's the key. You pay them a compliment on something that they can control. A person doesn't control their genetics. So you don't compliment somebody by saying, wow, I think you're absolutely gorgeous right. and stunning. Or I love your face or whatever. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But you do compliment them on their choice of wardrobe. Maybe they're carrying an accessory. Then whatever it is that you compliment them on when you say hello, related to a story in your past. For example, let's say I wanted to approach you. I'll look at your glasses. And I'll say that's a very interesting choice of glasses. I see it has a, the studded diamonds on mm -hmm. either side. It reminds me of when I was a kid going to the beach in the pebbles. And then you go on to a whole exactly. thing like that. More on shyness uh, with uh, Frank Kermit right here on Passion on CJD 800.